register Simco identity. Hello, and welcome back to more MechWarrior 2. I am Nova Commander L. Title of the Wide Body. We're continuing on the Jade Falcon campaign, Mission Umber Wall. Except a very good German heavy metal band. Ready room. Not a German heavy metal band. Mission briefing! Wolf's Tau Galaxy is on the surface. We have deployed the 73rd Striker and 6th Provisional Assault Clusters and the 51st and 9th Garrisons to counter this threat. Elements of the 1st Wolf Cavalry have been spotted to the north in Mare Ferris. Or is that Marie? I think it's like Latinese or something. Mare Ferris. Bueller. Approaching a friendly mining operation. No doubt they intend to attack the facility, which, if taken or destroyed, could jeopardize our ability to manufacture heat sink components in this sector. We cannot afford to dispatch many units, but it's obviously a feint. Your unit will be on escort duty at the site. Go be a distraction, L1011 widebody. Sure, why not? I do what I can for the Keshik. Codename Umberwall, Planet Evsalur. Terrain Iron Oxide Rift. Rusty Rift, eh? Time day. You will escort a loaded hover train. It's the future, so all things will hover, even trains, I guess. It's a nearby processing unit. The enemy is more likely to attack in the open rather than risk an assault at a well defended position. Objectives the primary escort hover train to processing unit at Nav Omicron. Secondary destroy any slash all attacking units. Return dust off site Nav Pie. Delicious pie. Situation. Oh, there's a lot of this. This was in there. Yep. Heavy, wet snow. Tinted orange from accumulated iron oxide dust. Covered the head and shoulders of every battle mech in Star Commander Tomas's command. Hours ago, he and his mech warriors had used their energy weapons to chisel waist deep holes into the ice in which their mechs could hide. The blizzard had done the rest of the work, concealing the falcon battle mechs from even the sharpest eyes. Plus one for your two hit dice roll for partial cover. To keep himself alert, Tomas watched ice form intricate patterns on his mech's cockpit screens. He had last spoken with Trinary Command seven hours ago when they reported the Wolf Vanguard five hours from his position. An hour's delay in such dreadful weather was to be expected, but as the second hour crawled by, Tomas found himself vacillating between boredom and apprehension. Don't you have, like, solitaire in your battle mechs of the future or something? Blackjack? No, Blackjack's an inner sphere mech. Tomas bit his lip in frustration, desperately hoping that the enemy would show. Success in this operation would guarantee him a chance at a blood name. To gain that opportunity, he would wait until hell froze over if necessary. Suddenly, a red light blinked to life on the comm channel. Thomas flicked the comm switch. This is Star Commander Thomas. Report. The reply made all traces of Thomas's boredom melt like snow near a bonfire. Oh, very poetic. Star Commander, I have detected a single battle mech, currently three kilometers due south and approaching our position at 108 kilometers per hour. I have no visual and my mag scan cannot identify the machine. That would be a movement rate of 10 hexes per turn. A battle mech moving that fast in the blizzard meant the mech warrior was either brilliant or crazy. More than likely, it was a scout for the main body of Wolf Clan forces. Tomas ordered his star to power up and prepare to engage the enemy. So with a movement rate of 10, that would pretty much cut out all the mechs above 45 tons or so, because anything over 45 tons isn't going to be able to move that fast. So that narrows down our potential enemies. Going by this game, the obvious choice would be either the Fire Moth or the Jenner 2C, and rules out the Kit Fox and Adder because they only have a movement rate of 6-9, where 6 is their walking movement and 9 is their running movement. It determines how many movement actions you can do per turn. Well, there are many clan battle mechs that fit this tonnage and role, given the context and the faction involved, I'm going to wager that this light scout mech would be an ice ferret, of which the wolves were fond of deploying. But sadly, we will not see the ice ferret in this campaign. Situation! Angered by an unbroken string of wolf clan victories, Sakha and Vanderman Chistu had determined that the world of Evsalir would become a graveyard for Owen Kerensky and the wolves of Tau Galaxy. 
to meet the Wolf Clan forces, Chistu deployed the 73rd Striker Cluster, the 6th Provisional Assault Garrison, and the 51st and 9th Garrisons. That sounds familiar from our briefing. If such an overwhelming array did not succeed in destroying the wolves, it would at least bleed them dry. The southern polar continent of Messian. Mark Messian? Was in the middle of its twilight months, and Sakhan Chistu used the half light and wintry landscape to his forces' advantage. In preparation for the battle, Chistu ordered his troops to paint all their mechs and elemental armor a dirty white that the wolves would find almost impossible to see because we don't have targeting computers in the future. You have to see by your eyes. To avoid ammunition resupply problems, Chistu ordered all units configured to use energy weapons. Plot point! Supplemented only by long range and short range missiles. Finally, he ordered the Falcon forces to dig trenches and mech pits in which to stare the advancing enemy. This time, Sakan Chistu was taking no chances. Clan Wolf's forces dropped onto Evsalir's southern continent in the light of a ghostly dawn. The shadowed terrain played tricks on the warrior's eyes, and the southern pole's intense magnetic field rendered most of their battle mech's electronic equipment useless. Oh, okay. I guess that's why they can't see in the... whatever. Not even their holographic infrared displays of the future could help the wolf mech warriors much in fighting their prey. The constant eruptions of volcanoes and geysers through the snow and ice confused infrared sensors. Against such odds, wolves could only hope that fortune would favor them. Very interesting. We'll see how that plays out. That's all kinds of cool stuff there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our mission here. We have to escort a hover train. Okay, good old summoner is a typical Jade Falcon unit, so I will use that in some form. Unfortunately, as I did mention in the comments to someone, the ballistic weapons in this game are not modeled properly, so they don't seem to function as well as they should and don't seem to do the damage that they should do. So we're going to... Wow, that is a crazy configuration there. This is my user variant. I used that one before. Do you have something that is not... Hmm. This one might be okay. I try to use the... stock configurations whenever possible just to stay as close to the spirit of Battletech. She could use all kinds of crazy... exploitive configurations, but I really don't want to do that. So, you know, we do have the jump jets, which will be coming handy in this mission because we are going to need to be defending a large area. So I like this layout. Not as much long-range weaponry as I would like, but I think that should be adequate, so we will accept this alternate configuration B. And we do get a star mate on this mission, so we will load up FPS Shazley. FPS Chasley, I believe, is actually how he pronounces his name. I will mispronounce your names in the future, because in the future, there is no English, only L1011 wide body E's. Let's see, I would like to use the Stormcrow for this mission. Do we have something that's got better? Mm, that one's not too bad. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at that. Slam an Ultra Auto Cannon 20 into that spiddly little arms there. Why the hell not? There's a medium and streak. No, I think we'll just... Hmm. I think we'll just go with the primary configuration. That should give him enough. Because we'll be engaging targets at various engagement ranges. This should be a good mix of that, and it has a decent speed. As I was saying, let's see. Just real quick. The Stormcrow has a movement rate of 6.9, which is... So this is a technical error. It should be 96. You can go faster if you want to, but that would be a ridiculous waste of the Stormcrow's natural abilities. So let's, uh, oops, go back to... There we go. If you hit Exit Lab, it does not change your mech. Okay. I think we are satisfactorily... Well, actually, let me just double-check to make sure that I... Okay. Sometimes when you go in and out of these screens, 
you can it'll reset your mechs to strange and unusual configurations. Just making sure. I think that's good loadout. We'll be facing some very heavy firepower in this mission. Alright, are you ready? Let's go!